inline diesel electric locomotives, though familiar to rail travelers in America, are unknown in this country. Or should I say, were unknown. For in 1947, two companies, the LMS Railway and the English Electric Company, pooled their resources to produce diesel electric locomotive number 10,000, the first express diesel to be operated in Britain. This first diesel locomotive is powered by a 1600 horsepower engine, which together with the whole of the control equipment was designed by the English Electric Company at its various works. Under test at Rugby, English Electric test engineers lived with the giant 16-cylinder, 1600 horsepower engine day and night for over a week. Delicate instruments and meters were used to check over every part of her and the readings taken at frequent intervals provided a perfect case history of the job. The diesel engine and main and auxiliary generators form one unit. It was specially designed and developed for rail traction and the governing and control gear arranged for complete remote control. Incidentally, this 17-ton engine is the largest V-type to be built in Britain. From Rugby, the engine was taken to the LMS works at Derby. Here, a new workshop is the first to be established in Britain exclusively for the construction and repair of diesel and diesel electric locomotives. The decision to construct number 10,000 followed the successful experience gained by the LMS over several years of the application of the diesel electric principle to shunting locomotives. By the use of these shunting units, of which 44 are in service and more on order, increased availability and saving in operating costs have been obtained. Now the application of the principle is being extended to mainline passenger and freight services. First main stage in the construction was dropping the engine into the frames. Everything connected with the assembly of this unit was new, so that at every stage new problems had to be faced and overcome. Slowly, carefully, the engine is lowered into position. of the locomotive are mounted in a dust-tight frame. This control equipment consists of electromagnetic and electro-pneumatic contactors, relays and reverser and is operated by master controllers located at each end of the locomotive. While primarily designed to test the application of diesel electric traction to mainline working, it is hoped that the data which will come from the trials will assist still further the export drive. It will, for instance, now be possible to see a typical British product not only on the drawing board, but in actual operation in mainline services in Great Britain. are fitted at each end of the locomotive behind the driving compartments.
With the fitting of the side plates, number 10,000 is beginning to look like the finished job. The body, sides and roof, together with the nose ends, form one assembly, which is supported on two pivots placed at each bulkhead behind the driving compartments. The frame is thus free to deflect without stressing any of the superstructure. The last section of the roof, that over the fuel tanks, is being fitted into position. There are hinged doors in the roof so that the diesel engine covers, pistons and other parts can be easily removed for examination. The inside of the body, including the driver's compartments and the roof, are sprayed with asbestos to reduce noise and to provide good insulation. Power from the main generator is transmitted to six traction motors, three of which are located on each of the two bogies. Adjustable cushioned seats make driving number 10,000 almost an armchair job. A cab is provided at each end. Fittings include the main controller, brake valve, windscreen wipers, sanding and hooter valves. There are defrosters and sun blinds. Dashboards with indirect lighting to the instruments give the crew information on the working of the engine and equipment. Almost the last job before number 10,000 can take the road is to provide her with wheels. The two bogies, each with their three traction motors, are pushed under the frames and superstructure. These bogies of entirely novel design are fitted with roller bearing axle boxes. Painted black and chromium, locomotive number 10,000 is an impressive sight as she moves slowly out of the shop. The men who for weeks have worked at her building are there to give her a send-off. Privilege of driving her under her own power for the very first time went to Mr. H.G. Ivert chief mechanical engineer of the LMS who was responsible for the production of the locomotive. While engine number 10,000 was being completed at Derby, another locomotive of conventional design was being built at Crewe. Number 6256, Sir William Stanier, and a sister engine of the same design will work in friendly rivalry with the diesel and will provide comparable data on the two forms of traction on the heaviest mainline duties. For the longer and heavier runs, two diesel units will be coupled together and operated as one. In this form, they will compete with the steam locomotives. These steam engines are the first in the country to be equipped throughout with roller bearings to all axles. After short preliminary trials, diesel electric locomotive number 10,000 was run from Derby to London. Railwaymen, who all their lives have been used to the familiar tattoo of the exhaust of steam engines, stopped a while from their work as the black and silver, softly purring diesel went by. Is this, they thought, the shape of things to come? Romance still clings to the steam engine, but romance alone will not run the railways. New ideas, new methods must be given a chance to succeed. Houston, on the 17th of December 1947, the two new locomotives, steam and diesel electric, made their first public appearance. And there too, to wish them success, were Sir Robert Burroughs, chairman of the LMS Railway, and Sir George Nelson, chairman and managing director of the English Electric Company. Sir Robert Burroughs said that the building of number 10,000 represented one of the fine examples of cooperative effort between the users of power and the people with all the expert knowledge that was at the command of the English Electric Company. Sir Robert was sure that extremely valuable data would be got from the performance of the engine 
and of its team mate in tests against the steam locomotive Sir William Stanier. Sir George Nilsson paid a tribute to the LMS for their foresight and enterprise in building mainline diesel electric locomotives. In the States, said Sir George, overseas buyers can see hundreds of these engines. Now, we shall be able to bring overseas buyers to see this engine operating on our railways, after which we hope the engine will sell itself. The English Electric Company has been privileged to be associated with the LMS over a great number of years. That association had proved valuable to its customers, the travellers, and to the world, because it had enabled British equipment to be sold abroad. After the ceremony, the diesel engine was thrown open for inspection. So, with the entry into the railway service of locomotive number 10,000, a new page has been turned in the history of rail development in Britain. While the steam engine must remain for some considerable time the principal means of locomotion, it now has, in number 10,000, a new challenger. <laughs>